Hello everyone, I'm Ike and it's good to be back with you guys. From the previous video, we successfully created our login system. We are able to sign out, okay? Click on the admin button right here to get up our login form and click on the sign in button. And wow, what do you know? You're in. You can sign in. Now, once you've signed in successfully, you are presented with these two buttons in today's video we are going to start by making this ad symptom work um, so once the user clicks on this ad symptom we're going to bring up a form to add a symptom to the system we're going to open up some line text in our index page right here let me close off some of these pages these things are beginning to cluster nice in our index page right after all of the login stuff i'm going to collapse this collapse all of this i'm gonna bring these guys out like this and right here i'm going to create another form now this is the form with which we are going to add symptoms to our, to our system all we've done is to create a new div give it an id of div dash add dash symptom and the class of hide and mid you should remember this because we've used it previously right here hide and mid this class simply hides the div so that we can always show it when we are ready to and this brings it to the middle of its container in 25% from the top of its container all right at the top of this div we are adding a h3 with a text of add new malaria symptom and then we're breaking down to the next line afterwards we have a form for this form we have an idea of form dash add dash symptom a class of frm and a method of post now it's with this class and this that we are going to style up this form um, if you look closely, our action here is empty. This is because we are not going to be posting this form to anywhere. Instead, we'll be using JavaScript and Ajax to list in for when the submit button in this form has been clicked. This is the reason why I have a specific name and ID on this submit button, submit dash symptom specific name so that we can list it for when it's clicked once it's clicked we are going to use ajax to pick up the text in this impute field and then post that text asynchronously to a file which we are going to create to handle that post once we've posted from another file receive the post it is this page that we are posting to that is going to do the database stuff you know pick up the text that was posted to it and then drop in the database and then bring us a reply without having to refresh the page at all next off i would want us to start styling this part of our program all right heading back to our css file i'm going to add up rules in order to style our add symptom segment of the program so right here we have styling for the form, the add symptom, the frm add symptom. All we are saying right here is that it have a relative positioning, padding 0 pixels and margin 0 pixels, not much. Secondly, for the .frm class, we are saying it should be a block element, uh -huh. margin 0 pixel auto, meaning that it should be zero pixels from the top and the bottom also from the left and the right thereby centering centering it to its parent element then a padding of 10 pixels from the top and the bottom zero pixels from the left and the right well in essence whatever has this class is going to overwrite these styling right here well take note that it is at the click of this link right here that the add symptom form or segment will be shown so let's take a quick look of what or how we named this element so we be able to listen for each click from javascript okay it has an id of add 
dash Simpson. Okay, hope you can see that clearly. Add Simpson right here. Good. So from our JavaScript, let me close this up. From our JavaScript in Ajax.js, we are going to add code with which we can listen for each click. All right. Right here, we are seeing that the element with an ID of add dash symptom, which is our link. Once that element is clicked, clicked, we are going to run a function. Now, in the body of the function, we are seeing that div dash add dash symptom dot remove class hide dot add class show dot siblings dot add class hide. We've been through this from our previous um lessons where we are hiding and showing our sign in div right here good so just remember that the name of the div for our add symptom is div add symptom and this is where we named it div add symptom right here we saying that the div has an idea of div add symptom so at this point we are saying that the class hide which comes with the div originally right here which hides the div be removed and then we are adding a class show which we've already defined from our CSS uh, we've defined right here displaying the element block okay so we add the class show and then we are we are we are adding class height to its siblings should in case there is any other element that is shown we are removing it from the page all right next we are saying that a dash home dot remove class height dot show just bear in mind that the next thing we are doing once we've shown this div is to show the home link all right we remove the class hide and add a class show after showing up the home link the next thing we are doing is to fade out our symptoms wrapper the symptom wrapper is just the wrapper um, that holds our symptoms once we are ready to view the symptoms this right here is just pure housekeeping ensuring that that it's not in any way displayed we're also going to list in for when the submit symptom right here is clicked. Remember that the submit symptom is the submit button on our form for adding a new symptom right here. Submit symptom, submit symptom. So once this button is clicked, we are creating a new variable, calling it symptom, and we are saying it's equal to an element with the ID of txt symptom dot value. So we are picking the value from this txt symptom which is our text our text box right here input type text class id equal to txt symptom okay so we are grabbing its value and then putting it in, in this variable called symptom next we are emptying out the txt symptom or the text box assigning a value of empty to it then at this point this is where we start doing the ajax stuff from this point downwards now if you want to post anything from ajax this is exactly how you do it first of all start with this check if windows.xml.http request if there is a request xml http equal to new windows.xml.http so you instantiate this element into this as this else if else um XML HTTP equal to new activex object Microsoft whatever whatever whatever. Now this right here is for Internet Explorer. You know how they are with um, their activex way of doing things. So we use this for Microsoft purposes, and then this for every other browser. Next, you now use this object which you've instantiated here or created. You see XML HTTP dot on ready state equal to function so if this is ready we run a function we are not doing anything right here you can always just ignore this but down here this is where we are actually doing something interesting we are creating parameters and saying the parameter symptom is equal to this symptom which we created right here okay 
so we will be using we will be sending along this parameter once we post xml http dot open open a new connection make it a post and then we are posting to new symptom dot php we haven't created this file but in a moment we are going to create it and then we are setting it to true this true is just stating if you want it to be an asynchronous post well that's the essence of using ajax to do asynchronous posts so it always should be set to true um hex xml http dot set request header content type this is just um housekeeping setting the header for your posts so that the receiving page knows what kind of, of file is coming in then finally we are now sending this parameter alongside with the post we're saying xml http dot send parameters which is this that we've created right here good i'm going to save and then we are going to quickly create um this file right here new symptom.php which is going to receive the post and then drop it in the database i'm going to create a new file and i'll save it as new symptom.php okay make sure that it's sitting on the root folder of the system right here and save okay now all we'll be doing in this file is to first of all include our connection our config.php which is our connection file ensuring that we are connected to the database then we list it for a post because our ajax file here is going to make a post right here all right so we list it for that post once the post comes in we are going to grab the value of the parameter we sent along which is symptom so we'll cache that value in a local variable called symptom we now make a check if symptom has a content we just create a query right here which inserts into symptoms now symptoms is the table we created earlier from the beginning of this tutorial if i open up um, php my admin nice and then open up our diagnosis table right here you would notice that we have two tables we have the admin table and the symptoms table now is this table that we are posting to so we are saying that the query should insert into the symptoms table id and symptom which are the two fields of the symptom table so if i open up the symptoms table you would notice that we have uh, structure we have just two fields even though it's empty we have the id and the symptoms field good so um we're saying that to these two fields let's add values null to the id field reason being that the id field is an auto incremented field so it's gonna auto increment on its own and refill itself so to say and then for the symptom field we are now adding up this symptom variable which we have right here okay hope that's clear enough then afterwards we just kill the connection good i'm going to save and then let's hope we have no errors try to run the program and see what happens first of all i'll refresh the page once we click on add symptom this comes up our button looks horrendous but yes no problem now notice what happens to all the topmost links they disappear and then this home is shown which is what we've the rule we added right here where we say home dot remove class hide and then show up that's the only thing we are showing so i'm going to type in something let's try to add a new symptom let's say do you have a fever submit 
let's go to our database and see if in fact this has been submitted i'm going to browse mm, let's see why why this is so i want to add this class to that button so it has a good look okay submit name submit dash symptom i would also want to change this to a button not to submit so that the, the page isn't refreshed so i'm gonna save and let's refresh and hope for a magic at symptom do you have a fever Okay. so coming back to our database symptoms nothing not sure what the problem is but I'm definitely gonna find it out um, okay, let's try something here um, submit symptom dash and click let's be sure that this part that at least it's knows when the button is clicked so what i'm going to do is to alert hold up once clicked save i'm gonna refresh Okay, so it knows when the button is clicked. Alright. It knows. So what I'm going to do is to alert Symptom. Okay. Let's be sure we are grabbing that value. Have to refresh the page. Okay, we are grabbing this value. All right. All right, guys. I think I have located um, where the second error is coming from. If you take a close look at our code here in the new symptom file you'd notice that we are inserting into the symptoms table correct and then into the id field and the symptom field but once you come over to our database and you take a closer look in the symptoms table you'd notice that we have the id field and then the symptoms field symptom is strongly spelled so what i'm gonna do is to open up my tables my sql folder my tables and open up this symptoms file and then i'll make sure that symptoms is correctly spelled here symptom okay i'm gonna save this and then back to my database I'm going to drop this table which is wrongly spelled and then I'll import the updated table right here symptoms open here to make sure that the changes has been effected symptom that's good so I'm gonna close this insert into symptoms symptom good all right let's refresh and hope that everything works out fine this time around so add symptom and do you have a fever 
submit come right here um, finally here we go okay now well, that's great so now we are sure that our results it's coming in fine so that was a long one uh, I actually left in all of the errors here for you to learn one thing how to scout for errors how to how to debug your programs for you to know that it's always not rosy once in a while you hit bugs and something little might keep you down for so long all right guys i hope and wish that you've learned something i'll see you in the next tutorial have a good day